There is such a thing as luck or fortune, and it begins at birth. If you are born to a financially stable environment with two loving parents and a welcoming community, you are lucky. If you are born into a financially, emotionally, and psychologically unstable environment where your parents just happen to be crack house roommates, <laughs> you are unlucky. There is no way around that. Now, I am not saying that unlucky people cannot become lucky, but here's what they don't tell you. You have to be reasonably good looking. <laughs> Beautiful plus money equals lucky. Poor plus ugly equals unlucky. Now here's the gray area. Ugly plus money. <laughs> hmm. Well, that's how people like Rod Stewart have sex. <laughs> Now I know what you're saying. You're all sitting there going, but Steve, look at you. You're beautiful. <laughs> And you're a Canadian comedian, so you're filthy rich. <laughs> What do you know about bad luck? That's a good question. My main claim to bad luck is technology. I am technically cursed. I have an inexplicable power over powered items to make them completely powerless. I went and I used to be a PC guy for a long time and then I bought a Mac. I got my Mac and it didn't work. Out of the box, it did not work. It turned on, that was nice. It made that little And then I tried to insert a CD into it and it wouldn't take it. My Mac wouldn't read the CD or DVDs. It just spit it out like a kid that doesn't want his food. Just... Anyway, so then, I had to go into a Mac store to get my Mac treated by a Mac genius. <laughs> I don't know if you know who Mac geniuses are. They are young people that work at Mac stores and their screening is a little different for geniuses in the Mac world. <laughs> hey, teenager, can you wear this T-shirt? Yes, you're a genius. <laughs> I tried to tell him my problem. I said, uh, hey, genius, <laughs> my computer is not working. I can't even put DVDs into my Mac. And he answered in the way that only an infallible teenager prick can answer. He said, <laughs> you're probably just not doing it right. <laughs> so he tries it and it doesn't work. And then he says the sentence that has now become sort of a mantra to me with technology. He goes, uh, that's weird. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Now, if someone that should know something says that sentence to you, I've never seen that before, you're about to go through something very unlucky. <laughs> if you go to the doctor and the doctor's doing a routine examination <laughs> and he's behind you and he said, I've never seen that before. <laughs> You are in for some unwelcome exploratory probing, at the very least, yes? <laughs> anyway, the Mac genius tells me what we're going to have to do is we are going to have to uh, update your software. And I said, that's weird, genius, because I bought the computer this week. <laughs> so for your software to be more current, it literally has to be from the future. <laughs> And if I wanted something from the future, I would go to Future Shop, yes? <laughs> True story. But this, this is my best story of bad luck. I was on a tour in Australia, which I realize does not sound like very bad luck from here. <laughs> Hear me out. I was on a comedy tour and I had my laptop with me. I don't really know why. It doesn't work properly. <laughs> But I put it in the hotel safe, one of those little hotel safes. I wanted to make sure it was locked away. So I locked it away with a four-digit code. And the four-digit code that I chose is the same four digits that I used when I got my first bank card at age 12. I do not change my codes. I hate changing codes. When my bank tells me to change codes, I change banks. <laughs> so I put my stupid laptop that doesn't work in the safe and I went around Australia. So I come back and I go to get the laptop 
out of the safe, but of course it will not open for no apparent reason, just because I have bad luck with technology. So I tried a few times, doesn't work. I call down to the front desk. They send up a burly Australian man. <laughs> a burly Australian man comes into my room and he goes, uh, what's the problem, mate? And I say, uh, I can't open the safe. It's, uh, the, the code doesn't work. And he says, uh, ah, you're probably just not doing it right. <laughs> But he goes, no worries. This doohickey here opens any safe. Doesn't matter what the combination is. <laughs> he puts it on the safe, but that doesn't work, of course. And now I wait for the sentence that I know will come. <laughs> well, that's weird. <laughs> I've never seen that before. <laughs> so he comes back with a crowbar, a dude in three welding masks. He proceeds to pry the safe out of the wooden cabinet, completely destroying it. Then he puts the safe on his shoulder like a ghetto blaster from the 80s. And he's happy. He's walking downstairs. Come on down to the basement. Or if you like, down under. <laughs> True story. He said that. Now, so now we're in the basement and I'm wearing a welding mask while two men try to break into the safe. So we are essentially going through the same effort we would to steal a million dollars. Only we're just trying to get to a computer that doesn't even work. <laughs> They saw around it perfectly. They're apparently the members of some worldwide ranked sawing team. They've sawed around it perfectly, not a scratch on my Mac computer, even though the safe was the size of the Mac computer. And he hands it back to me. He goes, there you go, mate. Good as new. <laughs> and only then did I realize he doesn't know the history of this computer. And you don't know how good it felt to be able to turn on my computer show him that it didn't work <laughs> and say to him, sorry, mate, I've never seen that before. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Winnipeg, enjoy the rest of the show. Good night.